candles, pianos, chairs, headbands. All of these things may be talked about, and I don't know about that with Jim Jeffries. Hi, I'm Jim Jeffries. Welcome to another episode of I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. Me, I'm here with Kelly and Forrest. Kelly, Forrest has already shaked his head. He's upset with my intro because I didn't put enough effort in. No, I was looking at my water bill. Oh, he's looking at his water bill. It's very upset. Um, so, so we record this podcast. Um, we're, we're banking a few because people are going on holidays or whatever. We record this podcast three weeks before it airs. Two weeks. So, so I have to predict what's going on right now in the world. So oh, Ellen's in prison. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? Ellen's in prison, what, for being rude to a waitress once? Oh, my God. Ah, well, yeah. you know, that's, that was bound to happen, the poor thing. What else has happened? Oh, oh there's bloody uh, 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 Trump's. Trump's, uh, Trump Trump's he's at it again. Yeah, <laughs> Trump's at it again. Those Did you bloody, see what he said? Yeah, the, Trump said something stupid. <laughs> and Did those, he tweet it? Yeah, he tweeted it. Oh, and then man. the bloody, those... Those idiots on Capitol Hill, eh? <laughs> oh, they Capitol Hill. <laughs> Capitol Hill. <laughs> they can't pass anything. It's yeah, gridlocked. Yeah, yeah they're ah. bloody gridlocked. Buddy, you're trying Voter to get a longer. Yeah, no good. Uh, and Biden, he oh. said something stupid as well, yeah. but he didn't tweet it. And uh, <laughs> and Kamala Harris. Oh, no, he hasn't picked her yet. Yeah. Wait, he has. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he has. We're in the future. Yeah, we're in the future. <laughs> yeah, she's been, you, thought, you thought this podcast was being aired in the past. Yeah. <laughs> we already know that he picked Kamala Harris. <laughs> First, it's not Kamala. Kamala. Yeah, what you, Kamala. Her, name, her name's Kamala Madingdong. Kamala. That's how I do. Uh, wait, it's Kamala. Now you made me Kamala say Kamala Harris. You're making Kamala. me say it wrong. It's Kamala. No, it's not Kamala. With it's my accent, he's, he's got an Australian with accent. My, Kamala, right? With Kamala. my accent, Kamala. With Kamala. my accent, it's Kamala. Sure. Well, that's not Come how on. you do people's names. You can't uh, be like, your name's Jim with, with an accent. It's John. All right. All you know, right. You want to know what's funny about this is that Tar Tucker Carlson actually got really mad that somebody corrected his pronunciation of uh, Kamala. She's like, I, I should be able to say it however I want. Yeah. So you're Tucker Carlson. Yeah, yeah. You're I, look, Carlson. I don't always disagree with Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes me and Tucker are playing on the same field. And I think that it's Kamala. I like Kamala. Okay. And do you want to know why I like Kamala? Sure. I've been looking at Biden, and I think there's a good chance she will be our president within a couple of years. <laughs> so, a couple of months. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's dark, Forrest. <laughs> a couple of years isn't dark. All right. um, you, so when else do you agree with Tucker Carlson? Um, Tuck, I like when he does this on TV, when he opens his mouth up and goes, <laughs> when someone's being interviewed, and he has his mouth open, and he's just staring like a, huh. <laughs> and so you agree with ah, him. <laughs> I like that because I do that in conversations as well. I like that. Uh, we once did a field piece where we uh, we visited one of the prostitute ranches on the Jim Jeffrey show. Mm -hmm. It was a field piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were in Nevada. <laughs> Pahrump, <laughs> Nevada. Yeah, we were in, in Trump. Pahrump. 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 Mm -hmm. That's how I remember it. After Jack you says it. You did. It. <laughs> uh, so, but he will now. So we were there and we interviewed some of the prostitutes and... The guy who owned the thing, you know, the guy who was off the bunny ranch yeah. and all that type of stuff, that sort of guy, he died and Tucker Carlson went to his funeral and all the prostitutes had photos with him and Tucker. And so I'm like, <laughs> oh. I'm like, huh, maybe Tucker's a bit more liberal than we think. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my opinion mm. on that. He, makes, now, he insists on wearing the bow tie. Now oh, let's yeah. introduce our guest. Um, all right, let's introduce our guest today. Mike Dillon. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. Hello, Mike. Um, now, this bit of the show, I have to guess who you are and what you do. I already know your name is Mike Dillon. Called Judging a Book by its Cover. Yeah, he's going to, he's not, don't tell him what you do um, or what you're an expert in or what we're talking about today. And he's going to ask yes or no questions and I might give him some clues to help him eventually. I'm going to say that you're the youngest brother of Bob Dillon and your specialty <laughs> subject is Bob Dillon. <laughs> Um, no. That'd be a good one, though. That would be good. We should get that guy on the podcast. What's he up to? Um, and then, then, then if we do have a bad connection, we just hear the... Eh, eh, and we just go, ah, oh, you're upset with your brother. I um, assume the whole Dylan family speaks with that voice. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not spelled the same. It's actually spelled like Tim Dylan's. Ah, oh, so it's D-I-L-L-I-O-N. -O -O yeah. So um, you're the father or cousin... No, you're the cousin. I'm going to say you're too young to be the father. Of Matt Dylan, the actor. Mm. 
Mm. Am I getting this? Yeah, you're you're getting it great. All right, as, hey, as okay. every week. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Miss Dylan, are you, are you, do you work in a university? I do not. You do not. Have you written books? I have not. No. Oh. Uh, do people come to you for advice in your expertise? It's a good question. I, 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 they, uh, yes. Uh, um, yeah, is, sometimes I, I can say that. I would say my current job they do, and they did in my old job, but I don't think that's going to get you to the top. Yeah, yeah. Is your expertise, is it helpful to society, or is it just like, you know, about strippers or something? I, I don't know. Like, but like, is it that's something that helpful? something that's helpful? Like, is it scientific? Can it help mankind? Uh, it helps people on the softer side. On the, yeah. on the so oh. I, 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 Telling the company line here. I can tell her. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I give up. I give up. Now, okay, well, let's give you some hints. Um, what he's an expert in, you really like. This is, I've given you this hint before, but so let's say that. All right, so Philly cheesesteak. But, but, okay, not Philly cheesesteak. Okay. But you like a certain version of this thing better than another version. Ah, women. <laughs> uh, he's just giving you another clue. It's a, oh, I like certain. He touched his nose. No, oh. there's no. a clue now that's been revealed. You, you haven't been looking like at it, his background yeah. at all. Oh, Coca Cola. Yeah. Coca Cola. Coca -Cola. <laughs> yes, you like. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. Is this another Jack Hackett? A, a, a yeah, person? Well, through Jack's father. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 oh, I love Coca Cola. I like your Mexican Coca Cola. Yeah, that's what I'm I said. I believe that Mexican Coca Cola tastes better. But I, I, if you put two side by side, are we going to do that? I, I no, I don't. We that would have been it. good. Yeah. Um, well, I don't Jack, know if I go to the store. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I can tell the difference. And I have a theory that Mexican Coca Cola is actually just Mexican water. No. That was. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I was like, "Wait, is that really his theory?" <laughs> um. So, Mike Dillon, thank you for being here. Uh, Mike Dillon spent 27 years at the Coca-Cola Company. Uh, his job included brand marketing strategy, and you retired, right, as the vice president of global marketing strategy? Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, wow. so he did, that's where he ended up. I uh, think I know a lot about Coca-Cola. Well, we'll see, yeah. Um, uh, Mike, this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to ask Jim what he knows about Coca-Cola. I'll prod him along with some questions, and then at the end of that, you're going to grade him on a scale of zero through 10, 10 being the best on his knowledge of Coke. And um, Kelly's going to grade him on confidence and I'm going to grade him on et cetera. All right. And if you get okay. a combined score of 21 through 30, your Coke classic, 11 through 20 Diet Coke, zero through 10 New Coke. No, oh, New Coke was the worst. Yeah, well, we'll get <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been told that New Coke is the worst, but I don't know if it ever made it to Australia. I, I assume I it would have. It. It's only a thing that I've heard about, and it must have tasted horrible. I, had, people I were, New Coke. I remember New Coke. But yeah. I'm sure it was fine. I like that you haven't tried it, but you had a strong opinion <laughs> that it's the worst. I've just seen it referenced in so There was an episode of the Goldbergs recently where they referenced them getting New Coke, and I saw a documentary on the 80s where they talked about New Save Coke. Save it for the podcast. Oh, yeah. We are, we are we podcasting. Are okay, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, Mike, so uh, sit tight while we do this. Um, okay, Jim, uh, who invented Coca-Cola? I don't know the guy's name, Yeah, but he was like, um, he, was a, he was an addict. He was like a cokehead or something like that. And he, he invented it as something that's meant to go into the pharmacies as an elixir. And it was meant to make you feel a bit better. It was originally served in chemists and pharmacists. That's pretty on the nose. He was a cokehead and named something Coca-Cola. Yeah, I think well, there was there was cocaine in the original cocaine. There was there was <laughs> there was co <laughs> in the original coke in the original was coke there was coke. there was a small amount of cocaine in there to, okay. make, to make it do you, medical. Do you, <laughs> do you know where and when it was invented? Um, I think it was probably invented. Uh, uh, I reckon. Oh God! I reckon 1892 was the first Coke. Uh huh. Yeah. And where? Oh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, okay. there was a guy in Atlanta, and he was wandering around with his elixir. <laughs> he keeps going to say elixir a lot. I'm yeah, but that was like old school when when you just went, "It'll help you walk. It'll help you think. It'll help you think." Coca Cola, have some now. And so you said get rid of those pesky teeth. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mike's laughing. Um, why did he invent it? Um, because uh, he had nothing to mix his Jack Daniels with. 
<laughs> like, why else would you invent it? <laughs> Jack Daniels was invented? Yeah, Jack Daniels was before Coca-Cola. <laughs> Jack yeah. Daniels before Coca-Cola. And then someone went, this drink's horrible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do we soften in the blow? Okay. Um, wh- and the, the name Coca-Cola. Did it the comes, same guy come up with it? Or? it? It comes from the cola bean. There's beans, right? I, think, I don't know if I'm sure of this. There's beans that taste, have the flavor of cola. And they were the original uh, plant that was put into the Coca Cola. And what about and it's Coca? A, it's a uh, that's just a bit of fun, a bit of wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bit of wordplay. And and the same guy that invented Coca Cola came up with a name or a different person? Uh, by the, you know the way I'm asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a different person. Good job. Tell me about it. Yeah, it, was, right. it was his mistress, Coco. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and he didn't want he didn't want uh, his wife to know, so he changed it to Coca. Ah. Ah, well done, Mister Cola. Okay. <laughs> I think I saw that the Museum of Coke. This is all really accurate. The Museum of Coke. <laughs> yeah, that's a confident museum. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was unique about the original formula versus today? Um, the original formula had real sugar in it and not corn syrup. Um, okay. And Anything also else? it had cocaine in it. Okay. Anything else? What does it need else? <laughs> well, I'm just asking if that, are you done with that question? I've done that. Cocaine and real sugar. Okay. Um, yeah. What was, how was it first marketed? Like, what did they say? Um, it was, it was done like this. Hey, you want a Coke? <laughs> Go get yourself a Coke. That's how we used to market things back in the day. Are you thirsty for a different beverage? Well, there was something they claimed it did. Oh, it's an elixir. <laughs> elixir, yeah. Uh, it That's would, cute. it would give you, it would give you energy. Energy. It was the original, it was the original Red Bull. They were like, oh, you need a pick me up? Are you sleepy? Yeah. Uh, a cigarette's not healthy enough for you? Try Coca-Cola. So they've had many slogans over the years. Do you know what their first slogan was? Coke is it. Coke is it? Yeah, Coke is it is a slogan. I know, yeah. but their first, very first slogan. Uh, their first uh, slogan was Coke. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's in Australia. <laughs> uh, Coke, it's like water, but way better. There's another one of their slogans. That's a, that's a solid one. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm... For anybody that's watching this, I'm sure they can see that there is a gap here. By the way, well, yeah, because there was, we had yeah, there was we had there was four one donuts. more donut and a couple or, of bagels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the podcast cuts out for, for a few minutes, and uh, we're down to one donut. <laughs> Ravenous beast. Yeah. And we're there being all judgy about Coke. Oh, it's got a lot of sugar in it. I'll have that cream-filled puff pastry that has been deep fried as I talk about Coca Cola. Kelly's got a white claw. Is is White Claw Coca-Cola? No. Yeah. I oh, know. No. Kelly's got a Dr. Pepper on the desk. How fucking disrespectful oh, wow, are you? Yeah. Dr. Sorry? Pepper is its own company out of Dublin. I saw a documentary on it. But them. isn't it bottled by Coke? It is bottled by Coke. Is so it bottled by Coca-Cola? I thought so. it was so its own thing. I'm Mike's supporting. Yeah, oh. a good I like, I, Dr. Pepper's me number two. I like Dr. Coke's me number one. <clears throat> Dr. Pepper's me number two. Now, if I'm going to have just a soft drink by itself, I'll probably have a Dr. Pepper. But Coca-Cola is so versatile. Mm-hmm. You can use it in so many ways. You can drink it by itself you can have a scoop of ice cream in it you can have it with alcohol and other ways okay <laughs> okay um is coke available in every country and if not what countries is it not available in? uh coca-cola is available in every country on earth every country every country on earth and it outsells in it, it's the number one soft drink in every country on earth except for one country thought it was two well i have one okay. there is one country that that has a soft drink that outsells coca-cola and that is scotland and it's called Iron Brew. And Iron Brew is stuff it's like disgusting. that comes off the rust off girders. You know, it's rust water, basically. Ugh. Iron Brew. It tastes Iron Brew. terrible. It and tastes, that's, that's it like their terrible. version yeah. of Coke? It's like, a, no, 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 great. it outsells Coca-Cola. Uh, okay, it doesn't, okay. I'm not saying it outsells like, like Pepsi gotcha. and Coke. But it, 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 Coke isn't the number one seller. Even in bars, like people go, I'll have a vodka and Iron Brew. They just love Iron Brew. And we, we were in a store and there was like, uh, I said to Forrest, that's the number one selling drink. And Forrest bought three of them. I bought, I, I bought one for the driver, me, Jim, and then the, the tour manager. I had four of them in my hand and Jim goes, I don't think you're going to need that much once you taste it. <laughs> and then and I, go, and I, go, the I go, why? And he, he, goes, you, and he goes, you might not like it that much. And this woman behind the register, an old Scottish lady goes, impossible. That's what she said. <laughs> I was like, what? Sure. And she goes, iron brew. I go, why is it this color? Because it looks weird. And she goes, Gertrude. 
I was like, what? And she goes, steel girters. <laughs> it's like, okay. We weren't even in the Highlands. We'd just gotten over the border. Yeah, we were at like a rest stop, like on the side of the highway. Um, um, okay, we, so let's continue on here. Uh, um, how and when did the Coca-Cola company come to be? Uh, the Coca-Cola company came to be, I'm going to say, in uh, 1908. Okay, and then how did that happen or who was the person? Uh, World War One. That happened world war one in 1908 yeah it was still going mm. or mm. no 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 1917 was that movie yeah. there was just a movie 1918 <laughs> it was a movie yeah yeah <laughs> bloody hell no 1917 was, yeah. Yeah. was a pandemic sorry um, yes. <laughs> uh, i don't i don't i don't know how it started i'll okay. be honest with you um ba, 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 ba. how much is coca-cola worth today oh uh i'm gonna say it's worth two trillion two trillion yeah it's a lot Oh, okay. Sixty-eight billion. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. That's a hell of a drop Quite off. the range. <laughs> Still good. Uh, how much sugar is in one twelve-ounce can of Coca-Cola? Um, I would say uh, twelve teaspoons. Okay. It's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> twelve teaspoons. Yeah, be funny. Sorry. Uh, how <laughs> how much Coca-Cola is consumed per day? Like how many? Okay. Bo- okay. Just okay. This okay. How, there's this in the first year that they sold coca-cola how many bottles did they sell and then how many do they sell per day now okay so there's 375 mils in in uh, a can of coca-cola yeah but there's they're just seven... they do it by bottles i'm doing i'm like... doing the maths yeah no. so, okay so he bottles... is freakishly good at math in okay his weird so way, there's so... seven billion people on the planet that's confidence and i would say because i have about two to three cokes a week and i'm a big fan of the coca-cola maybe three if i'm drinking alcohol i have a lot more coca-cola but on a sober day i have three three cokes a week um so let's say the average person has a coke a week i'm gonna say uh 900 million bottles of coke a day okay and how many in the first year in the first year oh the first year it was only they sold like uh, 50,000 bottles of coca-cola okay um i'll tell you how coca-cola took off yeah what what really what really said it was we're only gonna ask you a few more questions and we'll get into it it was doing okay it was doing okay it was a popular drink but then during the second world war they said that the, uh, the 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 president, right? He said all of our boys deserve a coke every day, and they did a lot of ad campaigns. It was the drink. It took over Pepsi and all that because it was the drink of the war. And in World War Two, there was a lot of soldiers doing it. And then there was also the the mythology of the whole. Uh, the reason that Santa Claus is red is because of the Coca Cola commercials, and Santa was meant to wear a green outfit or something like that. And the red and white came from Coca Cola from all those ads. It was those nostalgic ads in the uh, during uh, the Second World War that really kicked it into overdrive, where people really got into Coca Cola. Okay. Um, how many different products does coca-cola sell like yeah and this means like you know there's diet coke there's like cherry diet coke like how many different okay so coca-cola coke with vanilla coke with cherry uh, <laughs> let me just give you a hint. Coke. Not, you can't, you can't let count me just give you if you start counting them that'll be the end of the podcast zero. so we can't, coke, we can't coke, do zero. fanta no diet fanta. no no can't do this <laughs> no. just pick a number good yeah. so far yeah. good so far though yeah. sprite diet sprite Sprite Zero. <laughs> um, all the different combinations that happen inside those all machines. All the brands they own. Too. You know the different ones, the machines uh, yeah, that yeah, you have in the, machine. in the Five awesome. Guys? Whoever invented the Freestyle Machine rocked it out with these. I know who invented that, actually. Um, I'm going to yeah. say oh, the Coca-Cola has over a 1,000 products. A 1,000? Okay. Yeah. Who invented that machine? A uh, friend of yours called Jake. Jake. <laughs> Jake Finkel. Jake's really Jake. smart. Yeah, Jake, Jake Finkel, yeah. Um... I don't know what that machine's called, but last we'll freestyle maybe. machine. It is called freestyle. I do. I do know who invented it. I read the. Wait, thing. it really is called the freestyle machine. I don't think I'm lying. I oh. think that's accurate. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow. That confirms. Um, okay, a couple more questions, and we'll get started. When uh, the cola wars, how many people died during that? Ah, uh, the cola wars. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about these the dun, other day. Dun, 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 dun. Now we'll get into that. Uh, Coca- the cola wars. The cola wars were between. Um, uh, they were between Pepsi and Coke, but I have I have a cola brand that I drink when I'm in Greece, Vicos. Oh, it's yeah. spelled V I K O S. Vicos. When you're in Greece, yeah. they they ask you at the bar, do you want Coca Cola or Vicos? Uh, 
<laughs> and then when in the dressing room, they filled my fridge full. I said, I'll have some Cokes. They filled it full of Vicos. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking hell, the Greeks. They're never going to progress that country. <laughs> they're, they're, they're never going to do it. They're, they're never going to fix their economy with bloody Vicos. I'll tell you that much. Oh, Bicos. It was with a B. It was Bicos. Yeah, yeah. Bicos. I can't remember either. Is Bicos too. close to Coca-Cola? It's just a cola nah, drink, but it wasn't the it's same. It's not very good. Now, now, for a while, they're in Britain. Now, this is if, if any businessman's out there and they're thinking, oh, I'm going to start a new cola, just don't do it. Richard Branson, when I was living in the UK, gave Virgin Cola a go. Ugh. You know, everything's virgin when they're virgin that virgin. And it, what was he thinking? You can't even make a fucking airline work. And all of a sudden, he wants to take on Coca Cola. I loved Virgin yeah. when it was around. But. He, he had a good record store, yeah. the end. What country drinks the most Coca Cola in the world? Uh, the most Coca Cola drunk in the world. It would have to be America. It would have to America. be. Okay. It would have to be America. Um, and then, according to Warren Buffett, I think this is accurate. We'll ask Mike. Yeah. Like, this is Warren Buffett said this. Th there's a reason why people don't get sick of Coca Cola. Do you know what it is? Um, I don't know the reason, but I know that Andy Warhol said that it was the great equaliser of mankind, that the Queen of England drinks Coca-Cola and so does the peasants in the street. Okay. So it's uh, it, like when it comes to wine and beer, you have all your craft beers mm -hmm. and, your, and your vintage wines and all this type of stuff. But with Coca-Cola, we all drink the same stuff, except I, I have the Mexican stuff in my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, I'll ask one more question. There's a lot of other stuff we can get to, but we'll just... Uh, what about Diet Coke? When was that introduced? I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the Diet Coke. I think it, I don't like the aftertaste, but I, I'm, I'm loving the Coke Zero. Mm -hmm. I like the Coke Zero. I think that's Coke a fine well, let's, When was Diet Coke introduced some and when people, was Coke Zero? Some people like the Diet Okay, so the Diet Coke would and have why? been... And why? Why was Diet Coke made? Diet Coke would have been made because of they, when they you know, figured out calories and all type of bullshit, right? And they started to realize that sugar turned into fat. Right, and so I, I reckon all the Diet Coke commercials from the 80s, I'm gonna reckon the early 80s was Diet Coke. And Coke Zero? Uh, Coke Zero was brought in in about 2005. Okay, all right. Now, I now I feel like Coca-Cola, if you watch some of those old Diet Coke commercials, they're very Me Too-y. Uh, there, yeah. there was that one of that guy who worked on the construction site and he cracks over the Coke and he's got his shirt off like that. And all the women are basically masturbating against the window. <laughs> They're all losing it completely, just, oh. And then we, then we go, he has a Coke break in another hour or something like that. It's very, very... Uh, a Coke break. You know what that guy's name was? What's that? You know what that guy's name was? What? Lucky. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Mike Dillon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that guy went back. I felt so me too. Oh, it was a horrible day at work. All right. Um... Uh, and New Coke, you, you said... You new, don't new Coke was brought in in the mid-80s and they were trying to change up Coca-Cola to keep, you know, during the Cola Wars. And actually it turned out to be the greatest marketing campaign ever, even though they did it by... They claimed to have done it by accident because people reminisced and, and they started stockpiling old Coca-Cola and all that type of stuff. And so then when they brought back Coke, they were like this, I'll never mistreat you again. And they kept on putting it in their fridge. And uh, it, it, it bumped Coca-Cola sales up more than anything they've ever done is the debacle that was New Coke. All right. Okay. Um, let's see how Jim did. I've right. been, uh, you know, some people have suggested that we do the accuracy thing, not first, because people are waiting for that more than okay. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I, how about I do et cetera at the beginning? Um, just do confidence. Just, On a scale of zero to 10, how did Jim do in confidence? I think, he did, I think I'm going to give him a seven on seven. confidence. Seven confidence. Etc. You get a negative two. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> Mike, how did Jim do on a scale of zero to ten on accuracy with Coca Cola? Ten being the best. I'd say six seven range. All right. Give him a six, six and, and a half. half. All right. There six and a half minus two is so four point five. Carry the one nine. Thirteen point five. Diet Coke. I'm a Coke head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is that, what, is that what you call people? No, no, no. Like, I just, that yeah, should have yeah, been. Yeah. No, no, no. Just for years I've been saying that on the hour. Yeah. Is that it's a like, thing? It's like, it's like a Twitch I've got. I'm a cokehead. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on a bus. I'm a cokehead. <laughs> All right. So let's start right at the beginning. Who invented Coca-Cola? Jim said an addict cokehead. Well, you know, that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy named Pemberton who was a pharmacist. He was an addict. He was a guy who was injured in the Civil War with, mm. with um, maybe the best wound you can get, which is a saber wound to the
to the chest. Jesus. Mm-hmm. I would say it's the worst wound. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a wound. It's a good, very braggable. Yeah. But he turned into a morphine addict, uh, oh. amongst other things. And he thought this this thing would help his addiction. That was his motivation anyway. So, yeah. yeah. No, I know. I know the answers, Jim. Uh, I don't know all of them, but I've been. I, I, yeah, maybe he wasn't a cokehead, but he was an addict. I remember it was something, uh, the pharmacy thing. I didn't yeah, know he, he was, was an actual pharmacist. He was but, definitely hurting. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was like a, yeah, I think he was a colonel in the Confederate Army, too. It's, but, but he, um, he. Which uh, one? It's, it's, it's been, a, been a while. Are they the good ones or the bad ones? They're the bad ones. No, the bad the, ones. The Confederate flag is bad. Oh, yeah, the bad ones. The bad ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack, the screen, can you fix it a little okay on the screen? Um, uh, yeah, the Confederates are the bad ones. So there's no statue of him. Just, um, just, just tweaking. Maybe, maybe at the Atlanta, at the Coke headquarters. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> take them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's take down these Confederate <laughs> statues. We didn't know there were statues right, until right now, and we want them down. Costume. Pharmacist costume, not the Civil War costume. Uh, oh, okay. oh, oh, true. Yeah, okay, okay, point, okay. Right. But who made the original? Well, it can be more than one thing. Um, <laughs> Jim said it was invented in 1892, and it was Atlanta, Georgia. Was he right about that? Well, 1886 was the year, and the guy was from Columbus, Georgia. Yeah, there's some 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 folks differ. So he apparently invented, made the formula in Columbus. Yeah, never sold it to anyone or used it, but then brought it to Atlanta to actually sell. So, can can I? technically right answer before we go can I, have you ever seen the i know the original recipe is locked up in a safe and the, have you held it have you looked at no. it you don't know what's in your product what's that you you don't know how to, you couldn't make it you couldn't make the actual product could you make coca-cola no. syrup no oh, okay don't well, only also, it's not like aren't there only two people in the world who know the recipe mike or is yeah there's only one? two and then there's a number that know parts Oh, and right. they all have to get together. If those two do- <laughs> now, do those two people do they have to fly on separate planes? It's very Captain America. No. I'm serious. Yeah, it's all very hush hush. Because you know, like I was watching a thing on the Royals the other day. So, so like, do you know that the that the heir to the throne and the future king cannot be uh, on the same plane, right? So, wow. so Charles can't fly with William. And William can't fly oh, with Prince George. In case George, the plane goes in case down. The plane, yeah, to, yeah. So William and Prince George, the little baby, have to fly on separate planes. Right. Yet, so I imagine the Coca-Cola system would be very similar. It's like the designated survivor thing for the United yeah. States. Yeah, that was yeah, just right. a TV show. <laughs> no, but it's based on truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know what they? That that really, that is true. When they do have the, it's the State the, of the Union or something like that, they have he has to pick somebody in his cabinet. I mention this every couple of weeks. All it is is the plot line to King Ralph. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they took that from the real life. Though, yeah. <laughs> and Mike, isn't the secret recipe was kept in a bank downtown, and then when the New World of Coke opened, they put it in the cool vault in there? Is that true? That's correct. Yeah. For so for years, it was in a bank in the trust company uh, downtown, and then uh, just moved to the World of Coke, and that was a big hush hush project. That we we're building that thing up, and then so there's a vault there. You can go look at the vault. You can't see the can't see the recipe. But you can see the vault. Now here's an idea. Rather than just protecting this one thing, why don't you photocopy it several times? <laughs> Keep it in your wallet. Yeah, yeah. Like, make it so much easier. Yeah. You wouldn't worry about losing it then. <laughs> By the way, I like how Jack keeps saying, and isn't it true that whatever, <laughs> we know that this was drilled in your head since you were yeah, two years old. I'm just old. making sure it's accurate. It wasn't <laughs> yeah, like yeah. fairy isn't tales. It's also yeah. true that address yeah. 434. It's, like, it's, like, it's like Jack can only do this on a Coca-Cola podcast and the Grateful Dead yeah. podcast. <laughs> and, apart, and apart from that, yeah. and apart from that, he has no other information. <laughs> I'm useless outside of these topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, do a, let's, let's, let's do a podcast on having sex with over three women. Ah. <laughs> I have to check out on this one. Um, uh, yeah. He's <laughs> <Damn you. laughs> poor cool little face. <laughs> you know <Like>. my stats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, hard to remember. Make him a, a squirtle playing right, next, card. Next question. I uh, asked why he invented it, and you said uh, to put in Jack Daniels. But it, um, I guess it's pretty close. We, we got all that. He's a pharmacist, a stand of war injury, and so sorry. Um, Elixir. The name. Where'd the name came from? Jim said it came from the cola bean, and Coca-Cola was just a bit of fun <laughs> <laughs> the coca part was a little bit of fun uh yeah, and so the uh, coca was from the coca leaf yeah. coca leaf coca yeah, yeah. leaf okay yeah, right. cola from the cola nut and the interesting thing is i mean all this fell together in a very lucky way at a lucky time because the guy who invented the formula didn't even actually come up with a name it was his bookkeeper who mm. said hey let's call this thing coca-cola because the some of the ingredients and then 
He used his fancy script for writing up the writing the words out, and that became the logo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if the same that guy logo didn't today. have any coffee that day, or had a fight with his wife or something. We might have a different name. Right. So the logo is very curly with all the C's, and yeah. that was just his handwriting yeah. or something, or yeah. did he really plan that out? Was that just how his handwriting? Well, it's you know, it looks like it's a so-called Spencerian script, and mm. you see a lot of baseball teams with that kind of stuff. It's like it's a very eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties kind of kind of look. And that was his, but he, that was his particular take on it. Now, yeah. did he end up getting any type of ownership in the company or what, did he just name it and do the logo and then kind of get nothing? Yeah. Usual agency treatment. Yep. Yeah. His, his name was Frank Robinson says here. So Frank Robinson. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least so. he's getting props on this podcast. Yeah. Well, there you go. he's finally getting his due. <laughs> <laughs> finally getting his day. And um, I asked what was unique about the formula. You said there was real sugar and cocaine and that was it. Yeah. There's uh, a small trace of cocaine in there to make it addictive. Uh, is that accurate? And is there anything else unique about it? The original formula, the original. Well, that, that part is true, but it's not the whole truth. The, the original formula, when it came, when they, when he invented it in Columbus, had, was alcoholic. Yeah. It actually had some other kind of different name they were working on, like Coke, Coca wine or something like that. Mm. But the county that Atlanta is in, Fulton County, had just gone dry, so he had to reformulate, took the alcohol out, and. Um, and that's how he ended up with this new formula. So, so I see know, that, the very original formula is alcoholic. See, that's the whole thing because you can add vodka to it. You can add so many other drinks to it. Why would you have it? You know, because well, I didn't know then he was an I, addict. I know, yeah. I know, but you think back. It's He's like trying to do it's something like, to make I, himself feel better. I watched. I watched an interview with a guy who invented the GoPro camera, right? Yeah. And he wanted to call it the skate cam because he was a skateboarder and he wanted to video tell himself yeah. skating. And then he was like, ah. Oh. Then I thought to myself, it could be used for other things. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could have really limited yourself. And th this says the thing I found. It said there was up. To, there was about nine milligrams of cocaine per glass. Nine and, milligrams. How yeah. much is that? Is that a line? No. Well, it's a gram. You you know you buy in milligrams. So uh, how many I've milligrams heard, are in a gram? Thousand. A th uh, um, no, a thousand milligrams. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's not much at all. No. no. Um, and it was removed from the drink in 1903. So it was in there for a while, huh? Like eight years. Yeah. Those coca leaves were in there. Yeah. And so uh, that if you distill it was about about that much. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have the actual leaves in there, everything's synthetic now, or do you actually have the, the, the cocoa nut or the cola nut and the and the leaves? Are those ingredients in there or are they just synthetically flavored now? It's synthetic. So well there's there's um I'm not exactly real clear on this one, but there's there is still an exclusion. I believe there's still an exclusion in the import laws of the US that allow coca leaves to come in just for um for use in the in the early formulation, but there's no cocaine in it. There's no, none of that stuff actually exists, but there's still some essence of it. Sure. But if I was to mix my own cocaine in, would that get me close to the original flavor? <laughs> That's why you're doing it. I know because I feel like when I drink it, it just rubs over my gums anyway. So, <laughs> um, so Coca-Cola was first marketed, you said, um, as an elixir, but also to give you energy. Yeah. It was like Which, a Red Bull. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I think that's fair. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it relieves exhaustion was one thing they used to say. Brain tonic, one of the original brain tonic. It was very medicinal at first. Yeah, tonics. And, you know, they were selling it just like this guy's personal needs. You know, there, there were a lot of, apparently there were a lot of um, Civil War veterans that were, um, had addiction issues, depression, alcoholism. And this was meant to be a way to get off. And also importantly for ladies, <laughs> the funny thing is always, it gets me the way they say this. Certain maladies among highly strung Southern women mm -hmm. are we able to address. Mm -hmm. Do tell. Not <laughs> Northern women and not low key women, just highly strung Southern women. Yeah, you know the type. They're, those Southern women, they're sitting there with a fan. <laughs> <laughs> they're going, This mid julep isn't helping me out. Get me a Coke. And she said something else, but she had a speech impediment. <laughs> I remember growing up, my whenever my brother and I would have a headache, my dad would hand us a Coke and goes, "This supposedly helps headaches." Is that true? I don't know, but that's apparently what it was used for in the beginning. Oh, so he would just give us Coke. I got told by a comedian who used to be a doctor, Harry Hill, right? Used to be a doctor. He told me that when you get a cold, to have like a Coke because the receptors or there's some receptors in your in your body that will all get 
taken over to the sugar and leave your body open to be cured from the cold or something. When you have a cold, you meant to have a Coke. This is why Coke dominates because it's like forced itself into every <laughs> solution. I, every I, may, problem you I may have gotten it wrong, but he told me if I got like, I'm feeling under the weather to have a Coke really quickly because the sugar moving, the insulin moving in my body would help out the... Yeah, I, the, I, I used to have a therapist that told me if you were having an argument with your wife, to have a Coca-Cola as well because that would help. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a wife either. Yeah, yeah. That was the thing, so. <laughs> so, it sto- so it stops punching. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first slogan, you said, Coke, go on then. <laughs> was that their first slogan, Coke Mike? is it. Coke is it. <laughs> it wasn't that, but it was just about as direct. Yeah. Drink. Drink Coca-Cola. Drink Coca-Cola. Yeah, they really are. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's subliminal messaging I, I, there. I, I tell you what, they have these, uh, they have these, those flags that go along the, you know, sunset. And for a while there, they had these uh, Jack Daniels flags. They were all, so you drove along, and all it said was in big letters, "Drink Jack Daniels," and then underneath, <laughs> responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> responsibly, you needed a magnifying glass to see it, and it was just a subliminal: "Drink Jack Daniels, drink Jack Daniels, yeah. drink Jack Daniels." I've never seen anybody drink, drink Jack Daniels responsibly. No, <laughs> ever. No, no, no. no. Um, so, so the yeah. slogan was "Drink." Yeah, I have how other many, slogans. How many there. slogans has it had? I don't know if I have the exact number. I have there's a bunch. Yeah. Um, there's a whole list here, but it, it's well, I'll, I lost the list there. But Give me I'll, some good ones. Okay, here, hold on a second. Enjoy. Remember the real oh, yeah, thing. Enjoy is- enjoys one. Enjoy. Is it, what marketing yeah. person gets paid for enjoy? I like this one of them. One of the original ones. Coca Cola revives and sustains. Huh. Here we go. I got the, I'll, the I'll, great I'll, national temperance beverage. I'll That's make a you some. One. I'll Little make you eat. some. Good. <laughs> That's my marketing pain. Great. Whenever you see an arrow, think of Coca Cola. I don't know what that right. one's about. Yeah. Or, or like for the larger bottles, that's a big Coke. <laughs> How about uh, uh, thirst nose nose no season? season mm. yeah. Thirst nose no season. Ice cold sunshine. Ice cold sunshine. Yeah, Around weird. the corner from anywhere. That's a weird slogan. I used to like well, that. I used to like that ad, but they made Coca Cola seem like it was a thing that the hippies could do. I'd like to teach the world to sing yeah. in perfect harmony. And they're all hitting the Cokes and all that type of stuff. Yeah. They somehow, with all the sugar and stuff, they've remained this like wholesome thing. And from my childhood, I just, I think it's the most recognizable brand in the world. It has to be the number one brand in the world, Coke. I, I read something that said, um, second only to OK, Coca-Cola is the most well-known phrase in the world. Yeah, that was one of our dinner party facts. Coca-Cola. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's OK. He has some other ones. He has some other ones. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We have three of them. <laughs> Kelly read it in an email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true, right, Mike? Then you, you sent that to me. It's the second most phrase or word or it was. Yeah, it's, it's why word. Mm. Um, Think about that around the world, right? There's not a lot of, you know, got languages. You know, hundreds, dozens, you know, like thousands of languages. Dozens, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Have a Coke. That'll sort you out. <laughs> Here was another one. Coke means Coca-Cola. That was in 1945. Coke means Coca-Cola. The old, 1942, some of the slogans were a little long. The only thing Coca-Cola is, Coca-Cola itself. And in 1939, whoever you are, whatever you do, think of good ice cold Coca-Cola. I feel like these are like <laughs> ex- <laughs> existential <laughs> crises <laughs> happening. Mr. Dylan, maybe, maybe you can answer this question. I've always wondered this. Why do you still need to advertise? Like, does it come back? Uh, it just feels like you spend billions on advertising. En- enjoyable, treat, spontaneous consumption. You, you need to be top of mind. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, my. It's like, think about, think about like, you know, pick another category, like fast food. You're going to drive by a restaurant. You know you're hungry. You know that it's time to eat. You know what's near you, but there's still a ton of advertising to get you to go in that direction. Right. But like, like under, for, under pressure, you're under a little bit of time pressure. It's not top of mind at the moment. You want it to be top of mind. But your product is so good. It's so good. And like, I, I hate to bang on about the same thing, but like illegal yeah. drugs, cocaine, heroin, they don't need advertising and they're still flying off the shelves. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And your your products as good as those products. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new slogan. Yeah. A lot less expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I think it's just that, like we were talking about earlier with social media. It's about staying relevant. Like look at, for instance, Zoom in the pandemic, like Skype had what a 15 year head start on that. Yeah. And somehow Zoom took over this entire pandemic. I don't and even people... think about Zoom. Anymore. I mean, uh, Skype. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like Zoom, so Zoom, it's just yeah. like if yeah. Skype had been advertising, they probably could have taken this and run with it. But Zoom, Zoom swooped in. That's one. That's my new slogan for Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola gives heroin a run for its money. <laughs> <laughs> well, better than that. The guy that invented it. That's... Um, okay, back to the questions. I don't know where they are. Okay. Uh, you said it's available in every single country, yeah, Jim. Is I that do. correct, Mike? So North Korea and Cuba, you're not going to see any distribution because of embargoes. But if you go to North Korea and Cuba, I'm sure you can find it. Yeah. Oh, uh, really like, I'm telling stuff. you, Kim Jong-un's not drinking Pepsi <laughs> like, <laughs> like a bloody weirdo. <laughs> well, maybe he's not drinking anything, though. Hey, well, maybe that's why he's so angry. He has to yeah. drink Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that what was happening? Yeah. Fidel Castro was like, get me a cigar and a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they had Pepsi either. Well, they must have had something. Uh, Bicos? Bicos. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of Bicos? No. No, nah, Bicos Cola. That's a real thing. And I'm telling you, like. Right the... now, there's some operatives from Coca Cola going to Greece. To, right. to in in, in Greece, we went to the movie cinema because we went and saw the Star Wars movie. In the movie cinema, they had fountain drinks and they had. They had Coca and Bicos as fountain options. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in India, the co the cola option was something called Thumbs Up, but there was no B in it. Thumbs, thumb, thumb. thumbs Up. Yeah, thumbs, thumbs, up. thumbs, thumbs, thumbs up. up. Oh, it is. Oh wow. Ah, uh, you got them. Yeah, thumbs it's, Up. It's like Dr Pepper. Yeah, yeah it was. Delicious. It was delicious. Yeah. What, who owns Mr Pip? Pip Pip. Coca Cola. Coca Cola owns Mr Pip, but you bottle yeah. Dr Pepper. Mr Pip and Dr Pepper are the same thing, right? Mm. They're uh, competitors, yeah. It's, they're also that so-called spicy cherry category. Yeah. And Dr. So, Pepper was independent. We started up Mr. Pibb in the 70s. I think it was 72. Now, Mr. Yeah. Pip is now Pip Extra. That's correct. And I, I, it's Pip. Pib. Pib. Two Bs. Oh, Not whatever. Pip. Pip. Mr. Pib. <laughs> Mr. Pib. Mr. Right? Pip is your teacher. I like Mr. Pip. School. I call him Mr. Pip. Right. So anyway, it's Mr. Pip. It's fantastic. It's great. Anyway, so so uh, so Mr. Pip. Now, yep. that is called Pib Extra. And yeah. I heard that was because some feminist went, why isn't there a Mrs. Pib? Is that right? Uh, I don't know. Mr. Pib, we, we were had, we just switched it, I think, just to say modern. I don't know the answer to that one. Yeah. What? M Mr. is still modern, Mr. Pib? Pib that identifies no. as. Marshall <laughs> Pepper could be, as, uh, could be male or female. Uh, That's true. Ah, yes. Oh, wow. Not come in the on. 50s. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> when, not when they invented it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it was Jane Seymour, Dr. Medicine Woman, or whatever that show was. Well, that's totally, totally different people. I think Jane Seymour was a gorillas. No, uh, no, no. Jane Seymour. J Dr. Quinn Dr. Medicine. Quinn I, don't know who oh, Quinn I was thinking of the actress Seymour. What's her name from it was, Aliens? It was no. You're What's talking her name? Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney, Weaver. Sigourney Weaver, who portrayed Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what my brain just did. That was a fucking journey <laughs> for us. <laughs> He's a doctor. <laughs> aliens. Okay. Um, what happened then? Coca-Cola Company came to be in 1908, Jim said, in uh, World War One, He was all over the place there in that one. Yeah, uh, before that. Okay, so it was invented in 1896, did we just say? 18. 1886. Uh, 1886. So 1992? With, uh, it became incorporated in 1892. 1892. 1892. Yeah, and uh, Aza, how do you say her name? Is, is uh, it a woman? Is it Aza. a guy? Aza. Aza. It's a woman? Chandler. So... Uh, our inventor, Mr. Pemberton, wasn't doing too well, and he sold out. The saber wound. And, uh, yeah. To a fellow pharmacist who turned it into a real business. And, and he, it, is, it, it, was that a woman or a man? Do you know Ace, Asa Candler? Or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a male. Uh, okay. Uh, I it was Azar, yeah, Asa, you yeah. could tell how shocked he was that a woman turned this that, into a good no i wasn't that I, I wasn't shocked that it could no. have been turned in that but back then yeah no like, i'm yeah, saying because yeah. she's a pharmacist or yeah. we were thinking if it was oh, a yeah, woman yeah, yeah. pharmacist, a pharmacist yeah. what am i thinking yeah. let's okay. do the amount of cokes i think i got those numbers spot on oh, yeah. um the uh, yes uh, so how um how many cokes are consumed a d uh, are sold per day and how many were sold the first year jim said that there are 900 million don't forget he said glug glug oh, no, glug, i'm glug, sorry glug 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 glug, glug, glug. You said 900 million a day, and first year 50,000 were sold. Was he close on that? Not so much. 
So the first year, there's a couple of different numbers out there. But 25 bottles in the first year is one number. It wasn't a, they weren't they weren't bottles. They were fountain servings because there's no bottles till much later. Um, so then there's another source that'll tell you it was nine a day, but it was very little, mm. not much. 25 a first year today. If you look at all the products of the Coca-Cola company, it's 1.8 billion servings, eight ounce servings per day. Yeah, but that's all the crazy. Oh, yeah. see, I didn't know that. I had hey, that right. what's what's the mythology around? I've heard this all that there was that they sold the bottling rights because someone said they never thought that uh, anyone would want it in a bottle, so they used to sell it, and then they sold the bottling rights for nothing. And now, to this day, the people who bottle the Coca Cola are a separate company. Am I correct from Coca Cola? Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically right. So that so so it was a fountain drink mostly available in pharmacies things like that mm. and they the uh, fellow who was in charge at the time so, which is asa candler sold the bottling rice to a couple guys from tennessee for a dollar <laughs> sold listen to these uh, terms and conditions in perpetuity no performance clauses right so, oh my god <laughs> so uh, and that was for u.s rights not yeah. worldwide all oh, right um, well, okay. now so what, what basically happened and once again this is just more good luck here's some guy who names it coca-cola that has good handwriting he sold them. This sounds like a big blunder. What it created was a franchise system. So the bottlers independently started to just make a lot of money on it. Everybody makes a lot of money selling Coke and making Coke. Mm. And um, they started uh, bottling it. And it was the first bottling plant, well, I think it was in Chattanooga. Mm. And yeah, that's right. So to this day, it, it's not 100% true that they're separate. There's a lot of, there's a very tight relationship between the company and the bottlers. But you usually think of the bottler as a separate entity. Right. The company makes brands and concentrate and sells to bottlers. Bottlers add usually the sweetener and the packaging, and they do the selling and the distribution. Wow. So for a dollar, what was that and even dollar. in today's money? A hundred bucks? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, bloody idiot. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. <laughs> yeah. I would have. I would have done a better deal. <laughs> That's if those, I those, if I are all cleaned up now. If yeah. I had a time machine, what I'd do is I'd go back in time and I'd tell that bloke to sell it for two dollars. <laughs> yeah, he would have crushed. He would have crushed. No, no. <laughs> and, and yeah, not in perpetuity, you might want to say too. Not in perpetuity. Um, and then it's uh, I think we skipped ahead there. Um, the that question was back there. Sorry. Right. Oh, Jim, how many grams of sugar went it? Jim said twelve, 12 teaspoons. Twelve teaspoons. That's that pretty far off. This says uh, nine, nine and a half, nine and a half teaspoons. Yeah, but not the way I drink it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you you put more sugar I, in. Uh, I, that's not sweet enough for me. I add a little <laughs> bit more in there, and then I stir it up. Free, it's very sensible. Nine and a half yeah, teaspoons. It's the Thirty-nine grams of sugar. Oh, you know what it was? The the freestyle machine. That's what I have written here. I was trying to figure out what that means. That freestyle machine. I I saw a documentary on the guy that it was the same guy that invented the Segway. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. And yeah, so there's a, there's a really interesting concept. It's just taking a technology from some, one area to another. So it's like, hey, look, when you're making a fountain drink, you're basically mixing some liquids. And, you know, that's not always precise historically. It's like, well, guess what? There are places where you get pretty precise with liquids, and that's medicine, right? So microdosing in infusion, basically it's that same technology applied to um, making drinks. So you just super concentrate it so that then you can have multiple, you can make multiple products in the same machine with micro dosing. Yeah, I, I find that machine too daunting. I stand there for like 10 minutes and then I'm like, I'll have an orange in my Coke and I'll make a diet and then I'll have a bit of lemonade and, thing, and then I just go, oh, I'll just have a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so I also heard the, the document, it was like a documentary I was watching. And so he invented the Segway a lot of people think he died, fell off a cliff, but he sold that company, the Segway company, to a guy that did fall off a cliff in a Segway. So it's not the same guy. <laughs> and he was, an, he was an inventor, and he invented this thing um, called the Slingshot, too, which could make clean drinking water out of, like, Poop. any, any like, with solar powered. And he yeah. went, yeah, so is that true? Is that, that was all, that, and they went, he wanted to be able to distribute it, so Coca-Cola helped him distribute it, like, in exchange for inventing that machine, right? Yeah, so that was, exactly. So the, the uh, that, we were involved in this thing. I don't know what's happening with it now, but we were involved with the slingshot. I mean, it's a great idea. And uh, it was the idea of uh, cleaning, having clean water, providing clean water throughout the world where it's necessary. And it's a problem in a lot of places. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that guy's pretty smart. 
Yeah, he's pretty smart. He invented the Segway, a thing to make clean water. This, uh, <laughs> like, I feel like the freestyle machine was probably like, I'll make this machine and just like in two minutes. I was like, I got it. All right, I just made a thing that with your body weight goes forward. So, yeah. um, Is there a difference in taste between Coke that's served in a glass bottle, a can, and plastic? I personally think I can taste glass bottle Coke I, my preference goes like this, glass bottle, can, then plastic. I don't like me Coke in a plastic bottle. Am I, is that just all in my, my head or is there no difference? I mean, it's, it, the most important thing is what you think, right? So No, it's not. Lot, I've been told many times tell the least important thing in the room is what I think. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that though. I mean, glass, generally speaking, glass, you know, it, it holds, because one of the big issues is, is it holding the carbonation? Right. And over time, the plastic doesn't hold the carbonation as oh, well. Oh, hey, so you hey, want that to stay safe. Go sit over there. Go play with your iPad. Sorry, mate. I mean, my son just wandered in. This isn't my house. I just, uh... <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. And then cans, some people, you know, that's just, a, again, that's a preference thing. So just think about beer, right? People, some people like canned beer. Some people will never drink a canned beer. They think it's wrong. Right. So you, know, you, like the, you get used to the taste. But the, the in theory, the bottle, the glass, glass imparts very little and contains very much except for of course you got the light effect but besides that you're good i always thought that the glass the coca-cola glass bottles are the sexiest i i think i think yeah. there's something that you've done very well is design mm -hmm. it's not just the liquid your design's yeah. always been better everything like people collect the posters and the old things and the old cooler boxes and you, you know think of another company where people want to buy just the stuff with the labels on i guess there is people mm -hmm. you know but but Coca-Cola seems to have nailed that better than anything else. Well, and like um, people always talk about Mac McDonald's having the best fountain Coke. Isn't there a, like a special relationship between McDonald's and Coca-Cola? It's got to do with how wide their plastic straws are. There's something mm. that people say Coke tastes better at McDonald's, but it's something to do with the straws. But that's just a theory. Do you know about this, Mike? I read about it a little bit. Can't tell. There's, us. Um, uh, so, so Coke and, uh, well, it's, it's really McDonald's doing. What they decide is, they're going to want to have the uh, the best tasting cokes, so that what they they do things like. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about. That. No yeah. worries, blink they, twice. We'll, yeah. we'll just edit yeah. this out. They, they do things like not urinate <laughs> the syrup, like everyone else business. does. Uh, I think you should go get a coke wherever you want to enjoy it. Yeah. You can find the answer on our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out our drink tastes better when you have a frozen patty in your mouth and some special sauce that's made of whale jizz. Um, Gross. Good lord. So, so cans. <laughs> uh, yeah. were, can, when were cans introduced over bottles, and why were they? Why were cans brought along? And was Coca Cola the first one that put the liquid in cans, like drinks? Well, beer was in cans in the '30s. Oh, okay, yeah. and of course, they didn't have pop tops. You're using an opener and stuff like that. Um, and then there was a, an attempt to get into cans during World War II. Simply, they're, they're much more. You know, you can move them around a lot easier. Um, uh, but they didn't come, Coke didn't get into actual canned beverages until the six, until 1960. So I like to do this on then, every- What's that? Sorry, I was about to, uh, so keep, keep going. Even then, there was a lot of concern, right? So that first can comes out, and what was on the, what was drawn on the side of a can? The bottle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want people to think that it was, you know, something other than what it was. And, you know, it's kind of a visual category, right? You want to see that drink. Yeah. It'd, it'd be like, if you served up a really nice juicy steak and then you put it in a plastic bag or a paper bag and said, here, chew on this, how is it? Yeah. Your enjoyment level wouldn't be the same. Right. You'd worry about that. Now we're used to it now. We don't think about it. Um, I, I do this every podcast. Uh, so the Nazis were involved. <laughs> the Nazis always do something. Now, now, there wasn't enough ingredients to make Coca-Cola for everywhere or the rations or something that happened in Germany during the war because of whatever. And so that you guys invented Fanta for them Correct or incorrect? Fanta is a Nazi beverage? It's not a Nazi beverage, but it's it's definitely a, a German beverage that was created. And they were Nazis. After the war <laughs> because there weren't any ingredients. And uh, by the and then we ended up buying it from them. Oh, the and Nazis made it, and then you uh, bought it from the, the Nazis. Nazis. No Nazis. <laughs> right. No, no, no. Of course. No Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Nazi money in that Coca-Cola. Uh, but anyway, so but if there were Nazis, they invented Fanta. That's that's fascinating. No. Invented, yeah, my understanding, my recollection is that they, yeah, there was light on ingredients and they ended up coming, they came up with an orange drink. 
Yeah, yeah, they came with their own drink because they couldn't, they couldn't get all the cola beans and all that stuff. Um, no. Yeah, I, I remember you bringing this up when we were on the show, and then I went on Snopes, and Snopes says that it was not invented by the Nazis. The Germans, the yeah. Nazis, yeah. potato, potato. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. We're going to get so yeah. much hate mail they, for this. No, but so it, we're up to no good. No, it's it's no, to our 10 German listeners. It was, well, how are you doing? It was prior to you World War II. You can't say sorry enough. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, it was prior to World War II, though. That it wasn't during World prior. War II. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it was after World War so I. It was soon when, to be nuts. It was after World War I when their, when their rations were all stuffed up and their economy was all in the toilet. And then Hitler was there, right, going, I like orange, like that. And then he's like, <laughs> he's like I, he, he was at Volkswagen designing a car with more headroom. <laughs> he was like, I want, I want more headroom when I drive around. I want something that I can salute in, yeah. right? <laughs> I, want, I, want a, I want a car I can salute in. And, uh, and also, why my arms up here? I enjoy picking oranges. Maybe I could do something with these. A lot of orange trees in Germany. Yeah, that's, yeah. How, that's how they got the oranges. They were all hailing Hitler, and then they were just falling off the trees. They were in an orchard doing it, and they thought, oh, this will go to waste. And then they made Fanta. And Fanta stands for um, fun at Nazi tents. Z. Z. A. Z. No, there's no Z. It's not fans. It's Fan at Nazi tents, eh? This actually says, in Snopes, it says, it says Fanta came by its name thanks to Keith's instructions to employees during the contest to christen a beverage. He told them to let their fantasy, oh. fantasy, German for fantasy, run wild. Upon hearing that, veteran salesman Joe Nip immediately blurted out Fanta. Right, oh, right. Yeah, he, his Fanta, his <laughs> fantasy was to name an orange soda. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's his legacy. I'll tell you, you must know a lot about soda. I'll tell you my number one soda. I've got two. They're from Australia. Have you ever heard of these, mate? You ever heard of these? Solo. Solo's an aerated lemon drink, right? And they, yeah. they half carbonate it. They half carbonate it so you can slam it down fast. Mm. Right, and there's always like some guy. If you watch a solo ad, it's always some like pouring, and it's all going down his chin, his shirt, and he's just done exercise, right? <laughs> and and solo was the first person to put the bigger holes in the can, the bigger mm. holes in the can. Before that, we had the small holes, and then Australia went, make the hole bigger, and they went, that's the best invention we've had in years. <laughs> make the hole bigger, you can pour it down your gullet. They started with solo. Then another soft drink that I'm a big fan of, and you can take this to America. This only exists in Australia. You buy this, you're onto a winner. You're on to a winner. Mike's retired. I believe he retired. Yeah, but he knows people. Yeah. He knows people. He can make a call. <laughs> you can we'll, still make money when you're Mike retired. Mike will split it 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Passiona. Passiona. Oh, I had that. That was good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Passiona's brilliant. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what's Passiona? Good question. <laughs> passion fruit. Passion fruit. It's a passion fruit flavored soda. Mm, you funny. haven't got a passion fruit flavored one, have you? He's writing something down. I think so. Uh-oh, he's Is typing. It, he's got or, a business yeah. plan. Order, order, <laughs> order yourself a, yeah. a can of Passiona. You won't go wrong. You won't, I don't think they even make diet Passiona. It's full you fat. Know, could, you know what we could do? We could, we could market it. We could say, drink Passiona. Oh, yeah, drink Passiona. Enjoy ah. Passiona. Well, also, also in Australia, if, if you're making out with a person, when I was a teenager, sort of in the 80s and 90s, our term for if you, if you made out with a girl at a party was called you had a pash. And it was short for passionate. And then it's like, to kiss someone, it's like, did you pash her? Oh, yeah, I pashed her. She was pretty good. We had a pash. Sounds violent. And so they yeah. had like a slogan, like in Passiona, like, have a pash. Ah. Oh, yeah, Passiona. Nice. Yeah, I had one of those. Those are really good. Oh, really I remember good. you like talking about it. I'm like, this isn't going to be as good as you're talking, but it was or very good. Or garlic chicken. You have a garlic chicken yeah, We're not talking about chicken. With the chili on it. <laughs> or garlic chicken with a Passiona. You'll bloody be happy all day, you will. Sorry, Mike. It's lunchtime right. here. Jim just gets hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, were, uh, uh, were you around for the Cola Wars? Do you remember him? No, that was uh, before I started at Coke. How many people I was died? Alive. Okay. Did anyone <laughs> die during the Cola Wars? Yeah, how many? I, I think uh, no, 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 no souls were lost, but maybe some jobs. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you guys. I feel like Coca Cola took the higher ground because you just kept on advertising your product and your product, your product, your product, your product. Where Pepsi were the bitch in the situation because they were doing the cola test taste yeah. test. Where they were, were you tests. you yeah. never ragged on them. They always ragged on you, and I feel like that makes them the inferior product because they're going Whoa, we're better than Coke. The and Pepsi also, challenge. Yeah, the Pepsi challenge. Now also Pepsi did something where they bought up all the uh, the pop stars. When I say all the pop stars, I know Michael Jackson, Madonna, Britney and Spears. Britney Spears. Was oh, don't all. forget, uh, what's her name? Uh, infamously, recently, Jenner with the Caitlin? Black Lives Matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Pepsi buy up celebrities where I feel like you guys don't 
purchase celebrities, you do a bigger, wider sort of plan. Am I right in saying that? Or who's a uh, over, over the years, it's changed. So I think Coke was one of the originals doing doing celebrities and sports way hmm. back in the time. Yeah, Mean Joe Green, uh, but it's, and 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 really led the the charge in that. Regard. That's right. You had a Cosby commercial. <laughs> you had. Mike a, was trying to avoid that. <laughs> you had. A, you had a Bill Cosby commercial. <laughs> He was trying to tiptoe. New Coke. That was for New Coke. Uh, yeah, see, that's why I failed. Oh, <laughs> it was doomed, yeah, New that's, Coke. That's why they got rid of New Coke, because everyone kept falling asleep on it. <laughs> that was Jesus New Coke. Christ. Taylor and Swift. He, Taylor. He and said, hey, I'm not doing that anymore because New Coke hurt. He said New Coke hurt his reputation. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was really bad bold words yeah. from Cosby yeah, Cosby was always like have it in the can don't have it in the clear bottle <laughs> this where says, you can see you what's going on <laughs> this says Taylor Swift does a 26 million dollar endorsement deal with Coca-Cola wow. or something yeah, the Swifty there's plenty of endorsement deals yeah. out there so, you guys also made polar bears look really sweet yeah could I could I get I don't need a big deal could I get like a three hundred dollar deal where I three hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 it's more than the fucking bottling company. Just do right? ten. I've got a better videos. deal than the bottling company. Yeah. <laughs> we have product placement deal. Yeah, I've always got one in my hand. Yeah, I don't see one. I'm looking. It's in the cup. It's mixed with bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find it so insulting that these people brought out their soft. Drink. I know Spindrift isn't Coca Cola. Yeah, sorry. Gosh. Yeah, it's, it's very, oh, that was one of the things. So, how many different products? I said a thousand. You said a thousand. Does Coca Cola have? Yeah. So around the world, it's five hundred brands, mm -hmm. and each and each a lot of them have different flavors inside of it. So it's close to four thousand variations. Yeah. Do you, Do you guys own any fast? Because I know that I know that Pepsi owns Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. That's why sometimes you'll see a Taco Bell and yeah, Pizza they Hut. Sold they sold it. Oh, they sold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you guys own any fast food? I feel like you're in bed with McDonald's, but do you have any? Yeah, we're, we're a pure play beverage. Right. Beverage, beverage, beverage. Now, there was a time when Coke was in all kinds of stuff wine, coffee, Columbia Pictures, mm. kinds of crazy stuff. And then uh, sold it to narrow down to, to beverages. Pepsi was into uh, the restaurant business and they still are in snacks. So, Frito Lay. I, my favorite Coke product, and this is going to sound like a weird one, and if, Forrest, you'll know what it is soon. At McDonald's in Australia, Oh, yeah. They sell frozen cokes mm. with a with a with a bit of soft serve in the top. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a frozen coke spider from McDonald's in Australia, one dollar or two dollars. I don't know why they call them a spider. It's weird, but yeah. yeah, but they do. But it's like a float, but it's, they call it a spider. Oh, it's very good, yeah. and uh, that's a winner. You get the soft serve. You dip it in the icy coke. You eat it off your little spoon. Ah, oh, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, new Coke. So uh, I think Jim kind of hit that. He said it, like it's that they said originally it came out that you guys changed the formula, it didn't go well, and then it was, then it kind of was maybe spun or maybe it was really Rosetta who did that on purpose to try and promote, or I guess maybe in the end it helped the classic formula the, the, better, the sales, the, right? The public thought they did in it on purpose. In the end it was positive, right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the, the, the story goes, I'll tell you, the story goes that, you know, here's the cola wars. The good thing about cola wars is at least people are talking about colas, right? That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And competition, we like that. A lot of discussion, and competition. Then, but it was the taste was, you know, at least it was thought internally that, that was an issue. You keep losing these taste tests. So it came up with New Coke, which wins in taste tests. Sip, importantly, sip tests, mm -hmm. not home use tests, not long term drink of six pack, drink a 12 pack test, but a sip test. So it would win in those. And a, a big fanfare, you know, Radio City Music Hall and all this. and um uh launched the thing bill cosby others people got uh, really mad that they took coke away so i remember okay. about yeah. seven I, th I think i heard 77 days under 80 days before uh, the decision was made to bring back regular coke so coca-cola classic remember you may remember that yeah yeah it's called coke so for a long time there was coca-cola classic and new coke both of them out there New Coke with a Max Headroom campaign. Remember that? Oh, I remember uh, Max Headroom. Max yeah, Headroom, yeah. Man. And uh, and Coke had a very Coke <laughs> Classic had a very nationalistic red, white, and you uh, campaign yeah, that. to go back to classic. Ultimately, of course, New Coke was retired, but it lasted a long time till about 2002, believe it or not. 
Am I right? Until 2002? That yeah, but I think, but didn't, he probably didn't produce as much. Because I remember, I remember as a kid, New Coke coming out, and it was like a thing. Like, people were like, have yeah. you tasted it? It's crazy. It was like, a big deal. we're freaking yeah. out. And no, we're it like, really shrunk fast. Once we came out with Classic, yeah. they were both good. Both just we were serving different purposes, I guess, different different yeah. audiences, let's say. Yeah. And uh, But ultimately, you're right, um, Forrest, that the uh, new coke shrunk 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 till it's only like the weird places like the northwest like spokane a couple of places like that that really just stuck with it mm. it was ultimately changed to coke two remember remember that too oh, yeah mm-hmm. coke two with the roman the numerals anyway that it's gone is there is there because i've heard theories over the years is, is there subtle differences in the recipe from country to country i when we were growing up we heard that americans had more caffeine in their coca-cola than we had because you guys are all a bunch of junkies or something that was a myth yeah. that went around as a kid or is that not true i would say that there's definitely differences in the sweetener ah yeah, the sweetener system so you think of the we usually think about as the flavor system and the sweetener system the sweetener you've heard of probably a lot of discussion about cane sugar this is why you like your mexican cokes mm, maybe yeah. maybe that's one of the reasons yeah and it's usually that's got like a heavier mouth feel and then versus a high fructose uh corn syrup which is fructose versus you know sucrose and uh it's a uh which some folks feel like they can taste taste a difference i was a fan of coke life the one with the green label and i feel like that yeah. stopped getting so and it was half sativa half Stevia, yep. stevia, half yeah. sugar, Sativas. and so, yeah. so yeah, so it was like uh, it was like a forty calorie drink or something like that, and I right. thought that was the nice middle ground, and I feel like they don't sell that anymore. It's very rare to find. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know if the demand's there, we'll fulfill it, but it's not. I don't. It's not broad. You don't see it everywhere. I feel like sure. Coke Zero has pretty pretty much nailed it in terms of like getting getting that Coke flavor, but with without the calories like diet coke is definitely its own flavor and like you're talking yeah. about the the yeah. aftertaste a lot of people don't like yeah. but coke zero Let's is so similar that. you're right on kelly the, the uh coke when diet coke came out the predecessor was tab remember tab oh, oh, yeah. 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 i only know yeah forgot i only know that. tab from movies back yeah. to the future back to the future yeah. i'll have a, something with no sugar you want something with no sugar <laughs> i want a tab free you want yeah. something free yeah. Uh, there are people that still just love tab. You, they'll they'll order it mail order. They'll you know certain stores so still still being produced. You know, was, was, but was, that was, had a very like sort of metallic kind of taste to it. Yeah. And so you're coming out of that flavor path and towards Diet Coke and Diet Coke flavor system is just different. The the uh, Coke Zero flavor system is based on the Coke flavor system. So it's, it starts with a Coke and says let's make it less cal, right? right. No cal. I'll tell you what I like. That's a Coke product. That a Fresca. That's a diet one. A lot of people don't like that. I've never heard of Fresca. Yeah, love that. Fresca. Yeah, you can get it. On, they they have it on Delta. Next time you're flying again, if that ever happens. Did you guys yeah. ever do a clear soda? I feel like Tab was clear and all that type of stuff. Right. We did Tab clear. Yeah. Pepsi well, did a Pepsi clear, and then our response was a Tab clear. Well, is this true then? This story that leads me into Georgi Zukov was a Red Army general, Coca Cola lover during World War II, and it said yeah. it said he I was. Mean, I read that. I don't know. I don't know that. It yeah. Was, but I read that the, the, the whole thing was, you know, Coke is very American, right? Some, some, when you're overseas, you're drinking it for a lot of reasons. Like it tastes good. It's refreshing. All those things. It's Americana. Mm. Maybe, maybe another reason it's, it's safe and you don't trust your own water system. But the Americana piece, you know, depending on what your political leanings are, what your country is, it may not be in your best interest to be drinking an American flag. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so this said during World War II, Red Army General and Coca-Cola lover Georgi Zukov was gifted a transparent version of the fizzy drink. It says by the company, he, um, he did not want to be seen drinking a soda linked to capitalist America. So an ally com- American commander in Austria ordered Coca-Cola to create a special beverage for Zukov who helped drive the Nazi out of Stalingrad. The clear Coke was more vodka-like in appearance and therefore more acceptable. So this is what we found, at least. Anyway. So, so, co- so Coke sorry. is anti-Nazi is what so, we're doing. Well, no, in yeah. World War II, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're, so, we're on the side of the Russians. Yeah. So before we go into the where, it outs- where it's outsold in different countries, yeah. I'll tell you a little thing that I know. When I'm in, I go to Montreal every now and again for the comedy festival out there. And I, I briefly dated a, a French-Canadian girl when I used to go out there and all type of stuff, right? Anyway, I found out that so French Canadians in Canada, a derogatory nickname for them is Pepsi's because the French Canadians like Pepsi more than yeah. they like Coke. And so I was in a bar and like this Canadian guy was like, oh, I was having a good night and then some fucking Pepsi's came in. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you That's know the, so Canadian. You know the fucking Pepsis? They're so rude, eh? They're so rude. <laughs> Even when they're bullying, it's just not that bad. Yeah, but that's the, that's the nickname for French that's Canadians. So it's Pepsis. funny. You said America was the number one country for drinking Coke. I don't believe that's correct, right, Mike? Is that? That's Mexico. Mexico, the Mexico. Mexicans, and yeah. that I bet you that has something to do with the water. Well, and the, the cane sugar. Yeah, th this says Mexicans drink about 745 Coke beverages per year. Americans drink about 401 per year. Damn. Each. Wow, they're crushing. Each person, yeah. Each person has 400 Coke products Well, averaged out, yeah. Like, how many do you think you have? I don't have 400 a year. I, yeah, but do you I think have you have two or three that. in a day sometime? Oh, yeah, when I'm drinking, I have yeah, like yeah, 40 so. in a night. Yeah, that, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you before, got a bar. When, before when you were, you were trying to do the calculations, you're like, I have like one a week. I'm like, I've seen you go through a 24 <laughs> One <pack."> a week. <laughs> Mike, yeah. I, I have a question. My dad drinks eight Diet Cokes a day. Is that normal for people who work at Coca-Cola? <laughs> he starts out. He doesn't drink coffee, right? He starts out with Diet Cokes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's to relieve exhaustion. And, and you, you're drinking a Coke right now, you, and you're you're... You don't work for the company. Did you drink Coke every day at Coca-Cola? Was everyone just walking yeah. around drinking Coke? Yeah, you know, it's, when I first started, I was just drinking regular Coke, you know, the yeah. classic, the real thing, all the time, like six or seven a day. Oh, God. And then, you know, when I started, I was like, you know, 26. Yeah. <laughs> and now that you're 28, it's really <laughs> <laughs> It became clear to me that I needed to cross the bridge towards Diet Coke at some point. Yeah. And all of a sudden, so... It was, but you know, you, you get, you get used to the taste and you can drink a lot of them because one of the questions we're going to talk about, I guess. Yeah. You can bring it up. Mentioned. Yeah. Should you go for it? Yeah. yeah. It's the, uh, there's something called uh, flavor memory, right? So if you eat, like say, think about um, grape soda or uh, orange soda or something like that, or even iced tea. At some point you, you, you've had too much of that stuff and you just, you can, you remember the flavor and you don't want any more. But cola, Coca-Cola, it tastes really good, and then your tongue forgets it, so it wants more. Oh. You keep getting it and wanting more. So yeah, it's that, like the, the only beverage that you don't get sick of, oh, like water. It? That was kind of in line with something that that uh, Kelly found. According to Warren Buffett, Coca Cola has or it has no taste memory, like you're saying, which means like water, a person will never get sick of it. Why is Warren Buffett got this information? And he's smart. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's a stock market guy. He right? knows how to invest. Yeah. He's that? the largest shareholder. Oh, is there he? you go. Is he really? <laughs> wow. He drinks, he's a big cherry Coke guy. He drinks cherry Coke. Cherry Coke is the number one Coke product of all time. Anytime oh, I go to a restaurant. It no, it, it is. Anytime <laughs> I go to a restaurant that has it, I have to get it. You can just go to shops. No, it's it's fountain drinks. Uh, fountain drinks are uh, so good to me. So if I can get a cherry Coke fountain drink, which are rare to find now because they don't have them. Five guys places. have the machines. You like the That's ice? Different. You like, why a fountain, Kelly? I don't know. I I. The, there's just something about the taste that's so refreshing when it's a fountain drink. Mike's yeah, it must, it must be the ice, keeping it cold the whole way through. Yeah, that's weird because I'm not. I, I don't mind a fountain drink, but I definitely prefer a beer on tap to a bottled beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel that way too, though. Um, it's too fizzy in the bottle. When it, it lets, a, if it aerates a little bit, it's something better about it. I, I, sometimes I like drinking through a straw too. I think it might be that. Was I like it, how you're what, apologizing. <laughs> I like. What, I don't know if anyone knows what is the answer. Was I right about Scotland? No. I didn't even ask that question. I was just saying that. <laughs> I don't remember the question, but I know you were wrong about no, it. No, no. I think it, it's the only country where Coca-Cola isn't number one. Like, uh, yeah, Iron Brew. Have you ever heard of Iron Brew? No, I've heard of Iron Born. No, no. I, Iron Brew is this, this, this orange metallic looking yeah, it's, beverage. It's, it's the most popular drink in Scotland with Coca-Cola second. Yeah, Iron Brew. <laughs> Iron Brew. You, you, can't, you got to get those Scots in. But competition between the two brands brought their sales almost to equal levels in 2003. So Coca-Cola is right there. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, it's, but the uh, Scots, that's the Scots all over. They love being fucking different. <laughs> There'd be some cunt that would just be like, oh, the English are drinking Coke. We'll drink this orange stuff off rust then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. I don't know. I, now I really want to try it. Yeah, you said something else to me, Mike, on the call about like the, the other reason that Coca Cola does so was something with the fats and the foods or the. Uh, yeah. So, the, so a lot of times you'll see, um, People like to have Coke with food, or it's, we actually market it a lot with food, this whole Coke with food look. Um, the reason is, you think about when you drink it, you get that sort of bite in the burn in the back of the throat, mm. and it's a cleansing aspect. So it, it makes, what it basically is emulsifying the fat. So if you're eating a cheeseburger and you drink a Coke, your second bite is just as good as your first bite. 
Ah. She, had, she had become a cheeseburger virgin over and over again. <laughs> oh, really? So it cleanses your palate for the. See, so this is the thing because I always say you can't have pizza without a Coke, right? Yeah. Pizza and Coke yeah. go hand in hand. But I would never have a fan with Coke. And as much, and I, I, as I said, I like Passiona and I like uh, my lemon drink, but I like them just as an individual thing where I sit down and eat them. If I'm eating food, I always ask for a Coke. Yeah. Yeah. So think oh, about yeah. that. So substitute, what if you had like milk? Milk and pizza. Yeah. Imagine that. Ah, oh, yeah, but milk and cookies. I you can't go. I actually love milk. You can't go pizza. You can't go Coke and cookies. Well, you have you well, tried it? It's It's not a regular meal. True. Have it you might been to your palate Christmas time. Day at my house? That's what we gave Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, Jack wasn't even allowed to have what Pizza Hut or Taco Bell nah. your entire life because they were Pepsi. That's where, correct. When was the last time you had a uh, a Pepsi? No. no. You've never no. had one. No. Oh, they've really improved. It just, it just doesn't come up. It's really good now. Mike, I had my... I had <laughs> my... You don't go to restaurants that serve Pepsi either. You just don't do That's that. That's correct. Part of the culture. You wouldn't even conceive of it. It's not even an emotional thing. It's just like you just don't do it. Have Jay, you ever Jay. left a restaurant because they serve Pepsi? Because we have. Yeah. Yeah. I've, See, I've, I've asked for a parachute on an airplane because... <laughs> <laughs> Jason John Whitehead, I assume I can say his joke. I'm giving him credit, but Jason John Whitehead did a joke years and years ago about about how men think about breasts people women go do you like small breasts do you like big breasts what do you like and he goes it's a bit like coke or pepsi i have a preference but i'll take whatever's on tap mm. nah. yeah it's true makes sense um, not mike and jack though no we leave no. jack who we also by the way call the cheeseburger virgin so, uh, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say that but i didn't want to harp on him too much i was gonna do that privately Thank you everybody <laughs> Yeah. Cause he's like the cheeseburger in paradise if, guy. If ever a girl's going down and she goes, I don't like the taste of that. Give her a Coke. Go, Try it again. <laughs> no, because it'll, it'll take, taste exactly the yeah, way yeah, yeah. it was the first. The have, first have, sip have a taste. Coke and start again. <laughs> Better. Uh, uh, Here's some facts I found. I don't know if these are true or false. If you can speak to any of these, uh, this uh, or uh, Kelly found this one actually before. Studies have proven that Coca Cola, especially Diet Coke, is an effective spermicide. Oh. That sounds like something Kelly would have found. <laughs> I love how you said this. You go, I don't know if this is right. Kelly found it. Well, I know. I didn't want to say, like, I was, I didn't want to take credit for researching what we were doing when Googling. But, uh, a spermicide. So if you put no, it. I'm not if, saying Coca Cola company recommends them. It a said, spermicide. however, neither is recommended as well, yeah, a form I, of birth control. If, if, you, if, you, get, if, you, if you get, like, a plastic bottle, you put it in there and you squirt it up into the yeah. vagina, you're saying that no sperm can get through there. No, I think it's a spermicide. It'll, it'll, it'll kill the sperm that come in there. Yeah. They get through there. They'll just die. It's a Coke douche. We used to do a joke <laughs> that your mother's so poor that she puts flies into a Coke bottle and uses it as a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Enjoy Coca-Cola. <laughs> that, that was one of my childhood jokes. That was one of the good ones. Uh, and this says Coca-Cola was the first soft drink in space. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, in the in Challenger, it was in a shuttle, Challenger in '85, I think. All right. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah right, just but, but Pepsi was there too. Pepsi was the next day. But yes. yeah, it says eight hours later, Pepsi was there. Well, yeah, so yeah. what? They just went up in a different country or something? Or? No, same same uh, vessels. It was also the Challenger, just the first shift. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the bloke uh, opened up a Coke, and then some uh, French Canadian. Yeah, the story got... I heard was that uh, Coke, Coke had been planning on it for years and had been developing because you know it's you got a gravity issue there, right? So you can't just drink a Coke. You have to have a special way to deal with with uh, with dispensing it and drinking it. So they had to make a invented a space can, and Coke spent I don't know two hundred thousand something like that to make it. The story I heard was Pepsi heard about this, spent a crazy number like twelve fourteen million in order to come up with a can that could actually do this in the time in order to get it on the on the shuttle. Wow. Anyway, well, you can't just, you can't just open it up and have the blobs of it and go hump, hump, like that, <laughs> like, like Pac-Man. in the chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is the top part of the show, dinner party facts, where we ask you to come up with a couple of facts, obscure, interesting, that the audience can use to impress people in a social setting or something. Uh, we already talked about the Coca-Cola OK one, but there's a couple so others. Where was the other country where it's outsold? You had two. You said where it's number I one. I didn't say. I didn't say there was two. You said. You said it, there was. No, there were two oh, countries no, two that where, it wasn't, where it wasn't sold. even yeah, sold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's North, Cuba, North Cuba, Cuba and and North, and North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the Coca-Cola as the second most widely understood term in the world behind the phrase OK. Oh, my, most yeah. widely understood term. That makes sense. Okay. Um, do you had some other ones? Anything? Yeah. So um, before there was a six pack, there was no six pack, right? So yeah. who invented it? Coke. 
Coca-Cola invented the six pack, the multi pack back in 1932. Really? So we didn't have six packs oh, yeah. of beer or anything. They just bought everything individually. You just went to the yeah, fridge. Individuals. Well, you could, or, or big jugs, multi serve, but could you, could you, individuals could you, all together. Could you get a case of like a 24 pack? Or was, or, or... The first one was a six, six pack. That just it was had, wrapped in paper. That it had to be no like, like a rings or anything. It was wrapped in, in just, it was like a 12 pack today, but a six pack. It was back then when those rings were not around, when the sea life were just enjoying them. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was that purely just to like, convince people to drink more i assume at the time they're all just having individual cans and then would have to go back to a market so if they're yeah. buying more they can get addicted faster you know some a lot of marketing is just removing obstacles so one obstacle is it's hard to carry six or five or four loose bottles around right mm. so you know let's bundle them up and make it easy for the shopper to do their job so this is, i tell you what this is one of our best podcasts ever for people talking at parties there'll be some yeah. cat in a party holding a, holding a thing going oh you know the uh, first six pack uh <laughs> do you know that uh it actually uh, you can you, you become a cheeseburger virgin try it out right <laughs> and then your cheeseburger coke cheeseburger coke now try it with fanta it's bullshit <laughs> I, jim, jim my dad said the other that one was, uh, um, coke invented the coupon oh where there was a coupon there was no coupon right so in 1887 realizing that people that try it love it so let's say trial, once again, remove an obstacle, right? So if, they, if, every, if, if every time someone tries it, they keep repeating, you should get as, invite as many people to the party. So, so basically, it, the coupon. it was a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Coke, then you tell your friends to have Coke. Well, you have Coke, three people we'll have underneath you. <laughs> but also, is it called a coupon because is the CEO because of Coke? Because like, could have, could have coupons originally be called Fangle Dangles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fangle question. dangles. Uh, um, uh, have you got a fangle a dangle for that? <laughs> fangle dangle for the movies? Um, yeah, it says coupon is from France, 19th century. Literally a piece cut off from co a cooper, a cut, like oh. a piece of paper. So I guess that's where it goes. Uh, a piece of paper okay. there. Yeah. Right? So I think it started the financial yeah. industry. Um, but yeah, the uh, Coca-Cola. And it said... Uh, in, by 1913, the company had redeemed eight and a half million coupons already by 1913. But, and it was introduced in 1888. So, all right. Um, yeah, that's it. That's that the is, podcast, man. That's that it was, for the podcast. That was fascinating. Yeah. That might have been yeah. the most information I've taken in in a long, long time. <laughs> you have to really love the subject to learn, yeah. <laughs> including school. I don't know if I've learned so much in an hour in my entire life. And I'll remember all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we've talked about thanks the, for having me thanks for drinking coke and keep buying more yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry about what, it you, what about passiona are you working on that you're gonna work yeah i got a side project on that now <laughs> get passiona out to america i'm telling you every time you go to a fancy restaurant a michelin star restaurant and dessert or a cocktail comes around what do they say and it's infused with passion fruit passion fruit in australia grows like yeah. a fucking weed it's everywhere it's not an exotic fruit we have all the passion fruits you need to make this happen passiona you know the <laughs> bottles that of coke that say like share a coke with bob mm -hmm. my dad said that was test driven in australia and it was a big success and that's what led it to be everywhere wow. in the rest of the world but, uh, but because that's it was right. in australia mostly it had racial slurs on it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, would say, it would say and share coke, a coke with some and then it would say australia some thing. word what's that mike okay, another australia thing is you know coke zero when it first launched was like a white can and it had a different different um, campaign behind it and Australia switched it to the black can and the sort of the manly positioning. Mm. And, uh, and then that went worldwide. We also had the, um, the, yeah, the buddy bottles before the name, they, they were called like, so the, the 600 mils. So it wasn't individually. It was really, they were just trying to make you drink one 600 mil drink, but they went like this. Oh, this one's, this is a buddy bottle. They call them buddy bottles because mm. you meant to share it. Oh. Well, I <laughs> wish yeah, we would have ended the podcast on something more interesting than that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, th thank, you, thank you so much for being a Thanks, guest on the show. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, tell your friends, uh, subscribe, uh, write a nice comment, all that type of stuff. And if you're at a party and someone tells you something that you don't know the answer to, but you want to walk away smugly, say, well, I don't know about that. And then just walk away and never talk to that person again. <laughs> You've been a great audience. God love you, Australia. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>